Hey guys, today I'm out in Detroit with the all new GMC Canyon. GMC is going after a different audience with this generation of the Canyon than they honestly have in the past. We have an AT4X trim, which is the most off-road capable version of the Canyon and arguably one of the most off-road capable trucks available in America. And they're promising more luxury accoutrements on the inside of this and the new Denali trim over there on the other side. This is only the second time that the Canyon has ever had a Denali trim. Also, tons more power standard under the hood. First, let's take a look at the looks. This is the AT4X trim, but all versions are going to be getting a very similar bumper, including this cutout right here to help improve approach angles. I was surprised that they didn't decide to give this multiple different bumpers. So all versions of the Canyon are gonna be a little bit more rugged looking than we find in the Colorado, which is closely related, of course, from Chevy. All models are gonna have full LED lighting up front too. LED accents, LED turn signals, LED headlights, etc. Since this is the AT4X, this particular one is the Edition 1. It comes exactly as you're seeing here for about $64,000. We get this aggressive grill here, big GMC logo, front camera, the brush guard thing right there, the LED bar and the winch, all standard right from the factory with the LED fog lights right down there below. Lots of skid plates going on underneath the vehicle as well. Now, if you want to get your hands on an Edition 1, you're basically going to be looking at the used market. Essentially, all of these have been sold out. And rather unfortunately, at this moment in time, we don't know pricing for anything other than this particular model, but it's likely that the Canyon is going to be a little bit more expensive this year than last year because all versions are going to get the high output version of the 2.7 liter turbo, which is pretty different than we find in the Colorado where they start at around 230 or 240 horsepower. This one's going to have over 300 ponies standard. Moving around to the side, GMC has definitely paid attention to the surfacing on the sheet metal, really giving this some aggressive creases here and there. We have all-terrain tires, standard apparently on all version of the Canyon at the moment. This one has mud terrain tires on it and beadlock capable wheels. We have these black fender flares there, GMC logos, which is a nice touch, blacked out mirror caps. This one has the rock rail standard that's part of the Edition 1 package. And you'll notice that all the Canyons are now gonna look exactly like this with the biggest cab and approximately five foot bed behind. GMC said that very few people were buying the shorter cab or the longer bed configurations of the Canyon. So they just decided that this generation is gonna happen this way only. That mirrors what we're seeing across the pickup truck industry where most pickup truck shoppers are really after four doors and a usable back seat behind. You'll see that the bed really flares out right there. It really gives us an aggressive look. And then moving back here again, Fender flares, this one has the unique load bars on top here. This is part of the Edition 1 package and then the tail lamps that wrap around to the side. No side steps in the AT4X because that would hamper the ground clearance numbers for the departure angles, but you will find those on some of the other trims. Now back we find pretty typical pickup truck styling, combination LED tail lamps. So not everything in there is an LED, although there are some LED elements. Metal bumpers on the back with some plastic sections for scuff, scuff protection basically. So if this gets scuffed up, you could remove one and then reinstall a new one. The exhaust tip, it's right over here. I am surprised that they didn't try and integrate it a little bit differently in the rear. That's something that you might catch on if you were really aggressively off-roading two inch receiver down there, four pin and seven pin wiring harness connection. And then a nice touch for a pickup truck in this segment, a damped tailgate, which is something that we don't find in all trucks for some reason on sale in America. Somewhat surprisingly, GMC did not try and shrink the multi-pro tailgate that we find in the Sierra, but they did give this a few extra features. There's a small storage compartment in here with a water drain, so you can use that as a cooler if you want to. Simply pop that down, use these latches to close that off, and then we get a ruler on the edge of that tailgate. It's a pretty light tailgate unit, so it's pretty easy to just pick up there by hand, but no power tailgate even on the Denali trim. As you'd expect, in a GM off-road capable vehicle, we have the Multimatic DSSV shocks on this vehicle, front and rear. These really help improve the damping characteristics if you are planning on taking your vehicle seriously off-road. We also have a reasonable amount of height, although I don't know what the maximum wheel size you could put on your AT4X, or I should say tire size. There's obviously gonna be some limit there and GMC has not specified. It is possible that this is not gonna be quite as aggressive in terms of the tire size capable for the vehicle as say a Gladiator Rubicon, but this AT4X is definitely in the same vein as that Rubicon, which is really an interesting twist because the Tacoma TRD Pro, as we know it today, doesn't have the same kind of off-road capability that we find in this new AT4X. Most specifically, it's missing the front locker, which is a critical feature for a lot of folks. 
In addition to being one of the most off-road capable trucks, the Canyon is also gonna be one of the most luxurious trucks thanks to this Denali trim. You'll see that we have a very familiar Denali grill on the front. It's certainly more of a luxurious interpretation of what we saw on the AT4X. LED fog lights there, again, full LED headlights and lights up front. We have less aggressive tires, but still all-terrain tires. See, these are Bridgestone Dueler all-terrains on 21-inch wheels, sorry, 20-inch wheels, 21s are available as an aftermarket dealer installed accessory. Denali spelled out really large right there on the driver's door. Chrome step standard on the Denali trim as are the chrome door handles to help dress that up a bit more. Again, pretty big wheels and tires out back. It looks like all or at least most of the versions of the Canyon are gonna have their trim level spelled out right there at the front of the bed. But one interesting twist is this little bed shape right here, which means that this front section of the bed, it's not quite as wide as the back section of the bed. Bed. I'm gonna have to see what that turns out to be like in practice, but we do have these little steps here so that way you can put lumber as a rack in there so that we have a different tier of storage and this is far enough in that it's not going to be affected by that upper tier of storage. Bumper wise we get metal bumpers in the Denali and there's that step right there on the outboard side. Under the hood, there's a difference between the Colorado and the Canyon. The Colorado has lower output versions of the same engine. The Canyon is just getting the high output version, which is really intriguing because that's gonna include the base model and the rear wheel drive model as well. 310 horsepower, 430 pound-feet of torque from a 2.7 liter turbocharged engine. This is basically the same one that we find in the GMC Sierra, tweaked a little bit for use in the mid-size truck. It's made into an eight-speed automatic transmission, and if you get this AT4X, it has a very unique feature in this segment, a locking front differential. Locking front differentials are really rare in the industry. Very few vehicles, period, have two lockers, one in the rear and one in the front, and this is one of the very few. Because this engine is so torquey, GMC decided to just ditch the diesel that was offered in the last generation Colorado. I don't suspect too many people are going to miss it, this engine is probably gonna give you similar fuel economy, at least not too far off, with less expensive fuel. And of course, you're not gonna to need to feed it diesel exhaust fluid. As part of GMC's mission to make this truck both luxurious and off-road worthy, you'll notice that the AT4X is almost the equal of the Denali in terms of the interior parts. We don't have real wood trim. Instead, it's a carbon fiber-like piece that you find on the doors and on the dashboard. But aside from that, this is basically the same sort of interior when it comes to parts quality. Lots of stitched materials on the doors, the armrests, those inserts right there. You will find harder plastics just as you'd expect in a less expensive and smaller truck format versus the bigger trucks in GMC's lineup. So harder plastics up top of the door, harder plastics down lower on the door. But you'll also find a number of premium touches all the way around, like these optional red shoulder belts and the AT4X trim. And I really like this tricolor seat layout here where we have the lighter color section above, this darker color section below, the red accents and red stitching. These seats are also ventilated in this trim. The AT4X also picks up a ton of red accents around the interior to help dress things up like the red surrounds on the air vents. GMC has done a really great job accenting out this interior, I think. Again, still hard plastics above and below on the dashboard, but soft touch materials in the middle. There's a prominent AT4X logo right inside that section right there. It has the same sort of trim that we find in the doors. Big touchscreen infotainment system up here, now running the same software that we find essentially in the GMC Hummer, only downsized a little bit and more appropriate for this vehicle. You'll find tons of controls down here, buttons and knobs with, again, more of those red accents there, the controls for the ventilated seats, etc. Down here, we find the controls for the lockers, yet more red accents, rear locker, front locker, a bunch of other controls, and an auxiliary switch, which is a nice touch. USB inputs for the infotainment system, controls for the four-wheel drive, shifter there, electric parking brake, and two pretty big cup holders. There's also a nicely sized padded center armrest that opens to reveal a moderately sized storage cubby. Keep in mind, this is a mid-sized truck. The instrument cluster is gonna change based on the trim level that you're looking at, but the top trims are gonna get this large, approximately 12 inch LCD instrument cluster. Unfortunately, this vehicle is not on, and we have a new steering wheel design that's pretty attractive and a new stock behind it. There's still buttons on the back of the steering wheel, so we have track up, down over here on the left side, volume up, down on the right, then controls for that multifunction instrument cluster, heated steering wheel, and then controls for the cruise control over there. Moving over to the Denali interior, we find even more interior upgrades like real wood trim on the doors and on the dashboard, more cross stitching right there. Again, a two-tone interior in this sort of uh, latte light color, coffee light color, and then some dark brown accents. GM and GMC do dark brown really well. It's a little bit difficult to tell on camera, but this upper section of the dashboard is actually a dark brown. We then find the laser accented wood trim right there in the middle. The same large LCD infotainment system and instrument cluster right there. 
padding right here for the driver and passenger legs. This is a really, really nicely appointed interior. The Denali logo right there embroidered on the seats with brown accents, and again, yet more stitching going on here. The seating position is very much like the outgoing Canyon, which is to say much better than the seating position that we find in the Toyota Tacoma. You're not sitting with your legs stretched really out far in front of you. I haven't obviously had much time to spend in these seats, but I am intrigued by the fact that we have a two position memory over there on the driver's door. Now let's move into the back seat area. This is obviously a mid-sized truck, so it's not gonna be as roomy as a GMC Sierra, but room is pretty reasonable back here. And headroom is definitely better than we find in the current generation Tacoma. Obviously a new Tacoma is coming soon, and I'm really gonna be intrigued to see how that stacks up against this GMC. Uh, back here in the center console, we have large air vents, some USB charge ports there, and then I'm not sure if they will let us do this, but let's see what's under the seat here. We have a storage area under the seat, a little bit of electronics there. I'm not sure what that is, but definitely some usable storage area under there. One interesting quirk, we have probably the smallest headrest I have ever seen here for the rear center passenger. We also get a manual opening rear window back there. And the rear passengers also have a fold down center armrest, which is nice and softly padded, and two pretty decently sized cup holders, in addition to the cup holders that we also find for the rear passengers over here in the center console. If you want to get your hands on the new Canyon, head over to your GMC dealer now because this should be on sale first quarter of calendar year 2023. Now, unfortunately, we don't know pricing information on all the different flavors of Canyon just yet, although we know that the very red AT4X Edition 1 is going to be around $64,000 and it is completely sold out. So if you want to get your hands on one, it's time to start stepping up to the used car market and see what they will cost there. If you are, however, interested in a Denali or any of the other flavors, you'll still be able to get your hands on those. I expect the Denali is going to be a lot less expensive than that AT4X Edition 1 because this doesn't have the front locker. And of course, it doesn't have all the other off-roady bits that the AT4X is going to come, especially in that Edition 1 with the winch, the brush guards, the rock rails, all that sort of stuff. This is probably going to be right around the same as some of the other top-end trucks in the segment. I'm guessing maybe around $50,000 or so. As far as base model pricing, that really is the unanswered question at the moment because all versions of the Canyon are gonna get the higher output version of the 2.7 liter turbo, something that we do not see in the Chevy Corollary. In the Chevy model, the base versions of the truck are gonna get a significantly detuned version of that 2.7 liter turbo. Here, they're all gonna get 310 horsepower, 430 pound-feet of torque. That's a lot of torque and a lot of power in a relatively small package. So if you're looking for one of the most fun, most uh, performance-oriented, small trucks in America, this very well might be that. Let us know what you think about that down there in the comment section below. And if you haven't already done so, be sure and hit the subscribe button. We'll see all of you soon.